Hello my fellow students, good day, I'm Adam Idris, coming up with another lecture titled Basic Grammar. If you can recall, we have taken the first lecture titled Vocabulary WM, where we have taken items like denotation and connotation, register and jago, phrasal verbs and idioms. Today's lecture is a step forward of the lecture we have taken before and is going to treat word classes, sentence types, tenses in English and punctuation marks. Due to the nature of the items we'll be treating in this lecture, therefore we have split the class or the lecture into two. Today's lecture is going to treat word classes and sentence types. Therefore it's been tagged module two lecture one. We have another lecture coming up tagged module two lecture two which is going to treat tenses in English and punctuation marks. I do hope you pay much attention to the items we'll be taking in this lecture and forward your questions and observations after the lecture. Thank you. As we have taken before, the items to be treated in this model are word classes, sentence types, tenses in English, and punctuation marks. The objective of this module is to make students understand the basic rules of using words either in isolation or in structures. Therefore, it's expected at the end of it, students will know how words are being inflected to form plural markers using nouns, to form uh, different ten changes, and uh, to understand how grammatical words are being used in sentences. If you can recall, this uh, model is split into two, the first lecture and the second lecture. The first lecture will treat only word classes and sentence types, and you expect in the second lecture tenses and punctuation marks. As we all know, words are bricks of uh, erecting structures and enable meaningful communication. Words are used to build phrases to build clothes, to build sentences, so also words are used to build the whole of compositions. Words are the most important part of every language in every form of communication. That's why they are being tagged as uh, breaks of building structures in every human communication system. Traditionally, words are divided into eight. That's according to our traditional grammarians. We have nouns. We have adjectives, we have verbs, we have adverbs, we have pronouns, we have prepositions, we have con conjunctions, we have lastly interjection. Apart from this, so many scholars like Houston in 1996 identified determinators, coordinators and subordinators as additional word classes. This is also in concern with what Quack and Greenbaum forwarded as articles, demonstratives to form another word class. So traditionally we have eight, but uh, taking the consideration of uh, Holson in 1996 and Quark and Greenbaum in 2006, they are said to be above 10. Broadly words in English are divided into 10, into, into two. Thus we have open word classes and closed word classes. Open word classes, they are often all described as content words because they admit new members. There are nouns, there are adjectives, there are verbs, there are adverbs. They are called open word classes because one can look for their meanings in their dictionary. They have independent meanings. That's one. So also you can have a conception in your mind. And that conception may decide to you may decide that this conception may be reality. Therefore, you can name it to be a noun. From there, you can have adjective. From there, you can have it as verb. From there, you can have it as adverbs. This is what they I mean by open word classes. In another, in a, however, there are some words classes are called closed word classes because they can't adu admit new membership. These are now pronouns, they are prepositions, they are conjunction and interjection in another sense. But uh, in word class, in open word classes, there are, for instance, ad, uh, auxiliary verbs. They are also called closed word classes because they can't admit new members. Therefore, these are called open and word classes. 
analysis. Thank you. Yes, as we have taken before, we have enumerated nouns, adjectives, verbs, and adverbs to be part of open word classes, which we see that they admit new membership. Now, to begin with nouns. Nouns, we all know nouns that are names given to concepts, uh, ideas, persons, and all this. They are classified broadly into proper nouns, formal nouns, abstract nouns, concrete nouns, and collective nouns. These are what we are going to take for now. Proper nouns, as we can see on the screen, they are nouns given to specific uh, names. Thus, names that start with uh, capital letters like Lagos, like Mandy, like Musa, and November. Unlike proper nouns, common nouns are names given to general things or things that don't refer to specific items. Thus, things referring to items of the same kind. Example of this can be students, can be a woman, can be a chair, can be a table. Taking a, taking a look at this, we can see that they are not referring to specific uh, persons, or things, or items. They are referring to things of general class. Now, we also have abstract nouns. Abstract nouns are names given to emotions, names given to actions, names given to conditions. Such noun could be like joy, anger, honesty, happiness, as we can see on the screen. Unlike abstract nouns, concrete nouns refer to things that we can see, those that we can touch. Things like chair, things like pencil, things like uh, decks. <coughs> and lastly, collective nouns are names referring to group of things, much together, and to be addressed as one. For instance, staff, family, vocabulary, team, audience, committee. Taking a closer look at these, they are all nouns referring to group of things or people match together. For instance, take for instance staff. Staff referring to uh, people working in the same organization. Family made up of different individuals. Team made up of different players. Vocabulary made up of different words audience made up of different uh, spectators, listeners, and committee made up of different membership. That's what we simply refer to as collective nouns. And now adjectives. Adjectives are simply words that do modify nouns or pronouns because pronouns mostly reflect noun in sentences. Adjectives generally can be for the words they qualify. Or modify. Take a look at what is on the screen. Uh, I'm in the phrase is a brave hunter. You can see the word brave is being highlighted. A beautiful girl. You can see a, a word beautiful is being highlighted. A good walk. As we can see, the word good is being highlighted. These are simply adjectives. Adjectives are classified into demonstrative adjectives, interrogative adjectives, possessive adjectives. Descriptive adjectives. All these look like uh, pronouns. Demonstrative adjectives are simply adjectives that used to or that are used to demonstrate or to identify things. To identify things that we are referring to. Take a look at what is on the screen. That man is my brother. That the word that is highlighted, meaning word that can be for the noun man and is identifying or referring to the word man this woman is kind and gentle this is pointing or is identifying or referring to the word woman this is simply what it means by demonstrative adjectives now interrogative adjectives as we can recall we have interrogative sentences which ask questions such questions have been used to uh, identify or other acts using interrogative adjectives. Can you see what is on the screen? Whose pen is that? Who's there is more or less asking a question. Which of my auntie is dead? Which here is being highlighted and is more or less used to what asks a question. 
Now, possessive adjectives. Can we recall? We have possessive pronouns. Possessive adjectives here simply indicate ownership, possession. For instance, my aunt is dead. My here is a possessive adjective indicating possession. Whose aunt is that? Mine. Then his car is in good condition. He's here indicating what? Possession. Then lastly, descriptive adjective. Descriptive adjectives are adjectives that give quality of the nouns they describe. For instance, he bought a brown car, not a black car. Brown here is highlighted to indicate the type of car he bought. They are very happy. This the word happy is being highlighted to indicate the mood the pronoun is referring to. Apart from the uh, types of adjectives we have taken in the other slide before this, adjectives do perform certain functions of attribution and predication. Taking a look at what is on the screen, we can notice there are two main functions of adjectives. The first one is attribution, that's attributive adjectives. Adjectives that can be for noun, they qualify or modify, are said to be performing attributive function. For instance, take a look at the two parties there, the fair lady, the big man. Fair, the word fair is highlighted, and the word big is highlighted. They are more or less coming before nouns they modify. That's the fair before lady, the big before man. It's not always that adjectives must come before nouns they modify. Certain nouns or other certain adjectives come after a verb in a particular sentence. That is where it performs or rather they perform predicative function. They come after the finite verb of a sentence. For instance, take a look at the sentences on the board or rather on the screen. Your daughter is very beautiful. Is very beautiful. Beautiful there is highlighted. Meaning is coming after a finite verb is. And then the second sentence, we are very or rather we are quite happy. We are quite happy. Happy coming after what? The finite verb are. Apart from the functions of adjectives, there are certain Comparisons, or the adjectives are used to indicate comparison. There are three degrees of comparison for adjectives. The first one is positive degree, the second one is comparative degree, and the last one is superlative degree. That's positive, comparative, and superlative. For instance, for the word tall, it's positive, it's comparative, it's taller, meaning between two people and it's superlative is tallest for instance Adam is tall when he's alone and comparative Adam is taller than Mariam and Habiba and superlative Adam is the tallest of all meaning comparison between three or more people good, better, and best, intelligent, more intelligent, most intelligent. Apart from nouns and adjectives we have taken in the other slide before this, verbs also belong to often class membership or word classes. Verbs are action words words that express action in a particular sentence. They are also to see the most important class in all the traditional parts of speech enumerated before. They are important because we can have a sentence of only a verb. Verbs is either finite or non-finite. Finite verb agree with its subject in a sentence. 
to indicate the number of the subject and to indicate tens. Finite verbs are groups into lexical and auxiliary verbs. A lexical verb is a major verb in a sentence. And uh, unlike auxiliary, it takes, or rather, they do take ing and ed. They are divided, or rather, classified according to transitivity and regularity. A transitive verb is said to be a verb that takes object in order to complete its meaning. Take a look at the example on the screen. John killed a pig snake. A pig snake is our object here, completing the meaning of killed. Then a second example, the girl saw a madman. A madman here is an object, completing the meaning of what? The verb saw, which is a transitive verb. They are said to be transitive because they take these objects or take these objects. Once, rather, let's attempt to what? To pull out the object in the sentences. John killed, killed what? You must have a sub, an object to complete the meaning of the word killed. The girl saw, saw what? Saw a madman. You must have an object there, even not a madman. To complete the meaning of what the verb so. Unlike transitive verb, an intransitive verb doesn't need any object to complete its meaning in a sentence. It rained yesterday. Instead of an object, it may need an adverbial. An adverbial is an adverb indicating location, time, manner when the action took place. It rained yesterday. It rained in Kano. In Kano here is what? It's an adverbial because more or less taking rather a combination of a preposition and a noun called a prepositional phrase. Then we have linking verb. Linking verb is also what? A lexical verb which connects the subject of a sentence to its complement. What is a complement? Complement is more or predicate. Complements of privilege are mostly what? Adjectives or noun phrases. Mostly noun phrases that complete what? The meaning of a linking verb. Lawyers are liars. Can we see? My daughter is pretty. Lawyers here are liars. And liars are what? Lies here is a noun phrase, completing the meaning of a linking verb are. My daughter is pretty. My daughter is pretty. Pretty here is an adjective, as I said before, serving as a complement, completing the meaning of the word or other verb is. Apart from the lexical verbs we have taken, auxiliaries also belong to non-finite verbs. Auxiliary or auxiliary verbs are verbs used to have lexical verbs to indicate or to form tense or to indicate doubt, possibility, necessity or obligation. Auxiliary verbs are of two types. We have primary auxiliaries and modal auxiliaries. Primary auxiliaries are verbs that are three in number. By three, I mean broadly. They are broadly divided into three. We have do, which can be does, which can be did, which can be done, depending on the tense and number of the subject. We have have, which can be has when the subject is singular, which can be have when the subject is plural, both the two are present tense, and we can also have had when the subject is both singular and plural. And uh, we can have lastly be family, which depending on the number of subject can be am when you have first person singular, can be is 
when the when the when the subject is third person singular can be a when the subject is third person singular or second person singular or plural they both act as lexical and auxiliary verbs as lexical verbs we can have is as in she is here This is called lexical verb because it's not having any main verb or lexical verb in the sentence. She is here. Is here is the main verb in the sentence. Mosa does the cleaning. Does here is an auxiliary verb serving as lexical verb because the clean here is a noun phrase. I had a boring experience. Had here. Is our auxiliary verb serving as a lexical verb in the sentence because we don't have any verb taking either ENG or ING or ED. These verbs can also be auxiliary verbs, thus, can perform the function of having main verb in the sentence. Take a look at the sentence La Didi is cooking her favorite dish. Is cooking. Cooking here is our main verb being assisted by is. I did not find it difficult to teach. Did here is our auxiliary verb helping what? Fine, which is our main verb. Don't mind about the insertion of negative element bef between did and fine. Then we have model auxiliaries, which can be can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might, ought to, used to, need, and dare. Although the observed tense changes as we can see because can is could, past conditional, will is would, shall is should, may, might, but they don't observe subject changes. Simply means that both singular and uh, plural subject can be used using can be uh, used with model auxiliaries as i said before they indicate possibility doubt necessity and obligation example you must go back to your house today must indicate what obligation you need to see me after the lecture Indicating what? Necessity. You may leave the class. Indicating possibility. Apart from the non-finite we have taken, because we say that lexical verbs and auxiliary verbs are non-finite verbs because they indicate the number of subject or they agree with the number of subject and the tense change in a particular or in sentences. We also have non-finite verbs which are not restricted in any way to tense and number of subject in a particular sentence. These verbs are broadly divided into three. We have participial verbs, we have gerund and infinitive. And now to the last class in often class category, which is an adverb. This is the last because we have taken the other three nouns, adjectives, uh, verbs. Now the last item is adverb. Adverb is, an, is a word or a word class which modify or qualify a verb, an adjective or another adverb. It usually answers questions. That's when the, uh, the statements are in form of questions that begin with when, where, how, and why. They are categorized to reflect or classified to reflect this. Maybe adverb of time. This tells when an action takes place. We have adverbs or words like now, often, let, soon, sometimes, recently. For instance, take a look at this sentence on the screen. He will write his exams tomorrow. Tomorrow here is, an, is our adverb indicating what time. That's why the word tomorrow is being italicized for emphasis. Musa was here last week. 
So we now have two adverbs here, here and last week. Now the last week has been italicized. But here is also an adverb. He was here indicating where place. Last week time, it was italicized because we are uh, more or less exemplifying adverbs of time than adverb of place. Adverb of place, this tells where an action takes place. For instance, we can have down, here, there, forward, backwards. For example, the cars are parked outside. Outside indicate where? Place. We have to settle the matter here. Here indicate where? Place. Then lastly, we have adverb of manner, which tells how an action takes place. For instance, we have adverbs like very, quiet, well, correctly. For instance, Musa answers questions correctly. Correctly here is an adverb of manner. That's why it's been italicized. She danced well. Well here is indicates what? Manner. Manner in which she danced. So we are now into another broad category which is a closed class. Recall our explanation in the first place where we identified or uh, uh, differentiate between open class and closed class. If you can recall, we said open class are words that admit new membership. They are called content words because they, you can open your dictionaries and look for their meanings. Unlike closed class which are not open to new membership, and they are called grammatical word classes. Grammatical in the sense they don't have independent meaning in dictionaries. Their meanings are relative. And they are there in sentences to glue other content words into action. Meaning to put other content words for you to have what, what is called a, a smooth meaning in a particular sentence. Or smooth running of thought in a particular sentence. The first item to be treated under close class is pronoun. Recall, pronouns are words used in place of nouns. We use pronouns so that we can't or rather we don't be repeating nouns on and on. Uh, uh, we use pronouns to avoid making our composition or paragraphs to be a clumsy pieces because we can't be using nouns on and on. Pronouns are therefore used instead of nouns. Take a look at the example on the board or rather on the screen. Abdul went to visit his friend Sani, but Abdul did not find Sani at home. Can you see? The sentence is clumsy because of what? Repetition of nouns anyhow. In the above sentence we can use pronouns in place of proper pronouns. So the sentence will now read Abdul went to visit his friend Sani. But he did not find him at home. He here referring to Abdul. Him here referring to what? Sani. The words he and him are there for pronoun. Others, other pronouns, we have them like she, her, we, they. We all know this. That's why pronouns have been classified into so many categories. The first one is what? Personal pronouns. Personal pronouns stands for person as you have taken in the other example. Can either be plural or singular. They are in third person, they are in first person, they are in what? In second person. They show gender, whether masculine or feminine. Another feature of personal pronouns is person. That's the grammatical category of pronouns. After three persons are involved, we have first person, second person, and third person. To exemplify this important feature of person in pronouns, uh, let's have an example of a particular discourse. Maybe friends chatting or discussing in a particular setting. The person speaking is called first person. Those listening or the one listening is called second person. The one spoken about is called third person. As we can see on the screen, first person has so many pronouns representing it. It can be first person, it can be I, that's singular, or we, or plural. That's I standing for singular, we standing for plural. My indicating position, our 
also indicate possession. Me indicating objection. That's objective case pronoun as indicating the singular, as indicating plural. Then we have mine and ours. Second person, you can have you or you. That's singular or plural. The first person, the, the first one is singular by assumption, and the second one is plural by assumption also. You are and you are, then yours and yours, indicating to some extent position. Then lastly, third person. Third person, according to gender, singular can be he, can be also she, can also be it. To indicate position, it can be his, has, him, her, they, them. This is both objective and subjective case. Then we have demonstrative pronoun. Demonstrative pronouns are pronouns that point out particular person or thing. They include this, these, that, those. For instance, this is by our university, Kano. This is singular and pointing something near to you. That is an interesting lecture. That is also indicating singular, but unlike this, is pointing something which is not near to you. These and those. These is indicating plural. That's plural of the first one we have taken that this, which is pointing to plural things that are more than one and are close to you. These are bad X. Then lastly, we have those which are pointing or which is pointing to something which is not near to you. That's near to the speaker. Those are still in use. The second classification of uh, pronouns is called interrogative pronouns. Words like what, who, whom, whose, and which are used to ask questions. That's from interrogative sentences. We now have interrogative pronouns. These words are used to ask questions, as you can see on the screen. What is your favorite color? Who gave you my book? Whose bag is that? Who is this? Then possessive pronouns. Unlike the interrogative pronouns, which are used to ask questions, possessive pronouns are used to indicate possession. They include pronouns like his, ours, its, yours, theirs, and mine. They are must or rather they mostly have what inflectional endings of s which ordinarily indicate possession. Except the last one, mine. This book is mine. The choice is yours. The pen is hers. These classes are ours. Then we have in the other classification relative pronouns. These are to some extent similar to interrogative pronouns except that relative pronouns are used to introduce subordinate clauses they are called relative clauses at the same time they connect them with main clauses for instance he is the lecturer that chased his student away that is a relative pronoun introducing subordinate clause that chase his student away. These are the chairs which I told you, which is a relative pronoun introducing a relative or subordinate clause I told you. This is the girl whose father was arrested. Whose father, whose there is a relative pronoun introducing the relative or other subordinate clause father was arrested and lastly this is the man who gave me a lift who is a relative pronoun indicating or rather uh, introducing the subordinate clause gave me a lift in other classification we have relative pronouns reflexive pronouns which have the suffixes of self and selves that's for singular and plural respectively. 
they are quite reflexive because they refer back to a subject of the sentence. For instance, she is deceiving herself. Herself, going back to who? She. You have paid. You have said it yourself. Yourself, meaning the subject is singular. Therefore, yourself is going back to who? To the subject. Musa locked himself. The same thing. Then lastly, we have they ended up hurting themselves. They ended up hurting themselves. Themselves here representing what? Plural they. The second category or what class? In the close class category is preposition. Preposition is a word used with a noun or a pronoun to show their relationship with other words in the sentence. A preposition together with a noun or pronoun because they always go together, which is its object, form what is called a prepositional phrase. Take a look at the sentences on the screen. Abdul gave the book to Maria. To Maria. To here is our preposition, while to Mariam is our prepositional phrase because we say that noun or a pronoun always go with a preposition to form what is called a prepositional phrase. Now, the second example Mariam cooked some food for Abdul. Our preposition here is for, then its object is Abdul. For Abdul forms what is called a prepositional phrase. Then we have other examples of prepositions like in, under, out, with, up, up, down, or complex prepositions as forming a cluster, apart from, on top of, as far as, in front of. The third class or word class in the close class, close class category is conjunction. Conjunction is a word whose only function is to link words, phrases, clauses, sentences, and even paragraphs into a cohesive or unified phrase. There are three types of conjunctions. We have coordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions, and correlative conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions are words that link two or more words of equal importance, thus that have equivalent grammatical structures. They link words, phrases, or clauses. For instance, and serves to add an item to another. Example, Musa and Isa are dancing. Therefore, and here is our conjunction, which is used to add. We already have the subject Musa, and for you to have a plural of Musa and Isa, you must use the word conjunction or conjunction and to add them up but indicate contrast he invited her but she refused indicating what contrast or serves to provide an alternative she either passes or fails the exams so leads to consequence Mustafa is tired so he went straight to bed the second class or the second type of uh, coordinate or conjunctions is called subordinating conjunctions. These are words that connect subordinate clauses to non clauses. Recall, we have two main types of clauses. We have the first one, which is subordinate main clause, and the second one is subordinate clause. While main clause stands on its own, subordinate clause cannot stand on its own and is being introduced by what is called subordinating conjunction. They include conjunctions like if, since, because, unless, before, as, while, though, it is. For instance, I have been here since 4 o'clock. Since here is our subordinating conjunction, introducing subordinate clause. We are going to write a test before they come. Before here is our conjunction, introducing subordinate clause, they come. I bought a new car because I needed it. Because here is our conjunction, introducing the subordinate phrase, I needed it. Unlike the first two uh, class, we 
applications of conjunctions we have taken thus coordinating and subordinating conjunctions the last one which is correlative conjunctions mostly come in pairs they are coming two words when correlative conjunctions are used the two items involved should immediately succeed the correlatives words that are used as correlative conjunctions include not only but also neither no either or not but both and such as for instance both aminu amina and aminu passed the exams can you see both and she is not only a brilliant but also a talented student you see the highlighted words not only but also that's the last example you either lead this class or keep quiet either or being highlighted and the last item to be taken in the close class category is interjection an interjection is simply an exclamation Interjection expresses feelings of surprise, pain, fear, anger, joy, agreement, admiration, warning, or disagreement. In sum, it expresses or we use interjection to express our emotion. It's usually been exemplified using exclamation. Ah, I am sorry. Ah, has in an exclamation. Oh, certainly having an exclamation for emphasis nonsense having an exclamation to express our emotion i can't believe it good god of mercy then having an exclamation in some we use interjection to indicate our emotion using an exclamation marker we are now moving to another broad item in the lecture that is sentence type sentence structure and type and function recall in our previous discussion we have taken word classes which we have identified and explained often and close class categories we are now moving on to sentence and look for its structure and function but before we go straight to the sentence there is need to observe the hierarchical order of elements in english in terms of grammatical rank word which we have discussed is a list element followed by a phrase then a clause then lastly a sentence as the largest element this simply implies that within a sentence you can have clauses and within a clause you can have phrases and within a phrase you can have words so our discussion now is going to be centered on the largest unit that is phrase or uh, that is sentence but before moving to sentence we are going to discuss what is called a phrase and a clause for us to have a clear understanding of what a sentence is all about as we are taking before phrase is a step higher than a word we have taken different word classes and their subdivisions therefore we are now going to discuss what is called a phrase a phrase as i said is a step above a word meaning it's a group of words which do not complete a complete or convey a complete thought it doesn't have a subject nor a finite verb for instance you can have a group of words called a phrase like a noisy class a conducive atmosphere for learning a good idea behind the door like what classes phrase is said to be divided according to the word classes we have noun phrase we have adjective phrase we have verb phrase we have adverbial phrase we have prepositional phrase and uh, as i said before they are closely tied to or their function is closely tied to the group of words discussed before 
I like a phrase, a clothes is a step above a phrase, and it has a subject and a verb. This sentence is also a group of words. For instance, Mary is there. While he was driving a car, although we came late, a clause is broadly divided into two. That is, independent clause and dependent clause. An independent clause is a clause that can stand on its own to make a meaning. In other words, it can be called a simple sentence. Example: Abdul caught the ball. Halima is on the floor. Then, dependent clause. A dependent clause, as the name implies, always depends on the independent clause or main clause for it to have a meaning. For instance, although we came late, as you can see, it has been uh, underlined. As we call in our explanation, explanation of subordinate conjunctions we say that they introduce dependent or subordinate clauses although we came late the, the program has not commenced so we have two different clauses here the first one is called dependent clause and the second one is called an independent clause taking a look at this we now we can deduce that the, the second one can stand alone to have a meaning a complete thought the program has not commenced but the first one which is underlined cannot stand for it to make a meaning it must mean that it must depend on the other one for it to have a meaning that's why it's been tagged dependent clause then in the second example before the fly took off in the third one when the balls broke An out sentence, which is the focus of our discussion. Remember, we said that a sentence subsumes clothes, or is made up of clothes, which is also made up of phrases, which is also made up of words. Sentence is simply a group of words that with a subject and a finite verb. It conveys a complete meaning and starts with a capital letter and ends with a appropriate terminal punctuation mark. Like a full stop, an exclamation mark or a question mark. Take a look at the examples on the screen. Muhammad has traveled to Benin. Having what? A full stop. Ending the sentence. The second example. No, Muhammad has not traveled to Benin. No, Muhammad has not traveled to Benin. Having what? Exclamation mark ending the sentence. Then lastly we have a question mark ending the question. How much is this clothes? How much is this clothes? Based on this we can say that sentences have been the highest in the hierarchy of grammatical structure are classified broadly into two types that is according to structure and according to function according to structure meaning according to arrangement of clauses within a sentence and according to function meaning according to function they perform in a particular context sentence types according to structure can be classified into simple sentence a situation whereby a sentence is made up of only one independent clause with a subject and a finite verb containing a single idea it doesn't matter about the number of words in a particular sentence let's see Omar is sleeping this is called a simple sentence because it contains an, a single idea it has a subject and it has a finite verb the second example, they have all signed the attendance sheets in the previous lecture. This is also a simple sentence because it's made up of only one subject 
and only one finite verb and it contains only one single idea and lastly how old is the university this implies that a question can also be a simple sentence then the second type is compound sentence where you have more than one independent clauses jointly connected by coordinating conjunction in all our explanation of conjunctions we say that coordinating conjunctions are conjunctions or words like an or but yet it is take a look at the example Aliu had the explosion and he called the police can you see the first part is Aliu had the explosion which is a simple sentence and the second part is he called the police which is also a simple sentence being jointly connected by coordinating conjunction and this obviously make it to be a compound sentence Mariam washed the dishes and she dried them Abdul tried hard yet he failed then complex sentence complex sentence contains one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses duly connected with appropriate conjunctions example although it was fine we decided to stay at home take a look at the example although it was fine although introducing the first clause which make it to be a dependent clause then the second part of the sentence we decided to stay home or we decided to stay at home which is the independent clause the second example Ahmad was extremely happy this is our independent clause being connected with coordinate or other subordinating conjunction because introducing subordinate clause because he passed all his papers even though the nation's economy has improved most people are still complaining the first part of the sentence is called dependent clause while the second part is called independent clause even though introducing the subordinate clause and by extension coordinating or yes coordinating the two clauses together and lastly we have compound complex sentence which contains two or more independent clauses and one or more dependent clauses for instance john is a serious student we say this as independent clause he always goes to the library to read this is also an independent clause but he still spells most of his papers this is also an independent clause lastly because of his overconfidence which is a dependent clause being introduced by subordinate clause or subordinating conjunction because then second example the first girl that I loved in my life was Bilkisu. This is a dependent or independent clause. This is an independent clause who inspired me with her brilliance, which is our dependent clause. And she was a school teacher, which is our last independent clause in the sentence. We now have two independent clauses and one dependent or subordinate clause this is called compound complex sentence then another perspective sentences are said to be classified according to functions they perform such as declarative sentence interrogative sentence exclamatory sentence wish command and request let's see their example and explanations Declarative sentence is a statement which affirms or denies an idea. For instance, President Buhari has dissolved his cabinet yesterday. Mustafa has not registered his courses. And lastly, Nigeria is the richest country in Africa. Then we have interrogative sentence, which is obviously a question. 
ask a question or a person and end with a question mark. For instance, when did Nigeria get her independence? Are you aware that the economy has improved? Then exclamatory sentence. We call our explanation of uh, interjection. Exclamatory sentence are sentences that show our subtle field of emotion. They mostly end with appropriate exclamatory mark. For instance, oh yes, what a nice idea. Then wish. Wish is also a wish, a sentence expressing wish. This is called optative sentence, which is like, I wish you best of luck in your forthcoming exam, or I hope to graduate in the next couple of months. By extension, the second one is also expressing wish. Then another type is command. This sentence type give or gives an order or command. The subject is mostly implied, not obvious. As we can see, the subjects are being enclosed in brackets. You move out of this place. It's in bracket because it implying is optional. You close that door. But it's mostly been clattered today. Move out of this place. You close that door because the subject is taken to be in flight. Another type is request. This is uh, more or less an interface between a command and a wish. Language use is mostly polite and the sentence ends with a question mark. For example, could you please shut the door? As you can see, this is more or less requesting. May I go out to see a friend? This is also requesting. This obviously brings us to the end of this discussion. That's discussion about the two broad items covered in this lecture. If you can recall, we say that uh, module two is made up of two lectures. That is lecture one and lecture two. And this is lecture one. We have covered word classes and sentence types according to function and according to structure. So we can now switch to the slides and go still remaining for the module two coming up in lecture two. Thank you.